What's going on, fellow A plusers? It's your boy Adam Perez. We're back once again with a brand new video review today. As um, believe it or not, we're gonna dive into The Walking Dead, uh, a franchise that I used to thoroughly enjoy and really watch for quite some time. Uh, I unfortunately did fall off. Uh, maybe the season after Glenn died, if I'm not mistaken. I know Negan was certainly introduced. I believe Daryl was captured, maybe by Negan's guys. Um, I think Carol hooked up with, was it Ezekiel, I believe? Uh, I just remember them going into the house together and the episode ending. And after that, I don't know if I ever really watched the show anymore. Um, I do remember watching maybe the first season of Fear of the Walking Dead when they wind up introducing us to their first spinoff show. Uh, and I eventually kind of just fell off of the franchise after that. Um, they had an additional spinoff with The World Beyond or something like that. I can't remember what it was that I was kind of interested in, but I never went ahead and tackled it. So, you know, me and The Walking Dead used to have a great loving relationship. And I just think after watching it for such a long period of time and a lot of my fan favorites no longer being on this show so much, I just kind of unfortunately fell off. Um, so, you know, if there's any sort of saving grace for me, when it comes to The Walking Dead, uh, one of the reasons why I always wanted to get back into it, um, I really wanted to see what happened with um, Andrew Lincoln as Rick Grimes. I miss the whole idea of him sort of being taken off of the show or him leaving the show sort of thing. I never really found out like how he left the show uh, with the exception of some people saying they saw him in a helicopter or something like that that he certainly might still be alive so I never knew what was going on with it but I was always fascinated to kind of jump back into this world and The Walking Dead finally gave me a reason to with the returning Andrew Lincoln and Denai Gurira, uh in the brand new spinoff I believe this is a limited event series titled The Ones Who Live um, now I'm kind of hoping that this turns into a second season and a third season. Um, but as of right now, I do believe that this is just a six episode event. And considering the fact that I was a big fan of Andrew Lincoln, I think he's a phenomenal actor. I've actually heard a crazy stat that he had never been nominated for an Emmy uh, from The Walking Dead. If I'm incorrect on that, please correct me. But that just kind of baffles me, uh, considering just some of the amazing, impactful and emotional um, moments uh, and performances that I've seen of this man on the show. So, uh, again, not a newcomer, but definitely a newcomer. And it's been a few years since I visited The Walking Dead. Um, but I really wanted to go ahead and give this a shot. And with it only being a few episodes, I figured why not do a review on it um, and jump back into it. So, again, guys, I'm not quite a novice, but I kind of am again when it comes to The Walking Dead. So, forgive me if I don't know all the connective tissues. Feel free if you're very knowledgeable on the subject in the franchise to go ahead and let me know in the comment section box below some of the things that I missed or maybe some things certainly worth learning from you guys. Um, if anything, I will say just looking at the credits before we even get into this, um, apparently Andrew and Denai had a very big role in the story. There is a third writer in here, a lead writer. So, um, you know, how much they um, put into it themselves. Who knows? I do believe if I'm not mistaken that Denai did write like an, an, a whole episode, um, in this upcoming series. I don't know what episode it's certainly going to be, maybe episode four or five or something like that. But I do, I did read that she certainly is, uh, at least going to be writing one of the episodes in here. And considering just how close they are with these characters, how much they probably really want to get it right and not really have too much crazy interference. Um, uh, if Andrew Lincoln is going to come back, why not come back to something that you have some sort of control over? You know what I mean? So it definitely makes perfect sense for me. Um, so I'm really, really hyped and glad that uh, they certainly return. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about episode number one that aired on AMC along with AMC Plus. If you have the streaming service, um, I got to say, man, the first sequence alone just blew me away. Um, no dialogue, just Andrew sitting in a room, you know, thinking and contemplating life to himself. The man has been through some shit for sure. Um, I thought his actions, his performance just spoke volumes uh, of just holding up the piece of glass, sort of looking at it, having thoughts. I mean, tear just coming down the man's eyes. I mean, 
if, 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 the, if the opening sequence doesn't give this man an Emmy nomination alone, then something's wrong with television, unfortunately. Um, it's just so funny. I literally read an article today to the, the director of Boone dene villanueva if i'm i can't even pronounce his his name correctly but he mentioned the idea like when it comes to movies he, he he's not a fan of dialogue that movies should just be imagery um and cinematic sequences and stuff and images that move you and it's so funny because i pushed back on the idea like no you need dialogue and trust me you definitely need dialogue but there are times and places where no dialogue is needed and just a performance of an actor and the imagery that you see speaks volumes. And that's exactly what The Walking Dead, uh, the ones who live, provided for me in the very first opening sequence. So kudos to them for just a really like really being able to just pull me in emotionally to what this episode was going to be like. I thought they did a fairly good job in regards to a recap. I mean, I got the idea. Clearly, Rick thought he was sacrificing himself exploded the bridge he probably thought he was gonna die everybody thought he was gonna die and if i had to assume his body wind up sort of getting found along the riverbank we found a bee sort of thing i think they say in the recap probably airlifted him away into this helicopter and wind up taking him to this city which i gotta tell you man the idea of like how far the series has come or this franchise has come in the sense that there's literally a city out there that is in secret that's being protected by an army i think he said of like ten thousand army members or thousands of tens of thousands of army members of a city of about two hundred thousand people living in secret sort of thing of just people that they've picked up uh, along the way and brought them back to this place for sanctuary um is amazing to me uh and to kind of see that they were additional cities out there i think they said omaha um and Portland, if I'm not mistaken, was another city. And this area, the Civic Republic military or the Civic Republic is like the third city that is is secret that even Omaha and Portland isn't even aware sort of belongs there or, or is actually there sort of thing. So they're really living in a secret location, which um, is startling in and of itself. But just to see the growth of how much I've missed um, in, in that period of time is unbelievable, honestly. But um, great way to go ahead and kick this off. Um, you get to see the idea that Rick Grimes is kind of I don't want to say he's captured, but I guess he's a co-signee. I think they call him somebody that clearly is working. Um, I guess maybe like I don't even call it like indentured servitude, maybe like working to earn his way sort of into the city. You got to work for like six years, killing walkers, doing a lot of the, the work out there to help support those 200,000 people and certainly keep them safe. So anytime there's a, a group of zombies or walkers certainly coming, like you can volunteer to be on the front line to go ahead and sort of chop these people down uh, and kill these walkers sort of thing. So he's been in hard labor for for sure uh for about maybe five years when we get to see rick grimes again uh and the man still has that passion to get back to michonne and if anything this is truly an epic sort of love story um the idea that this man is willing to do anything especially cut off his hand which for the longest time watching the walking dead and being somebody that remembers at least um the the early parts of the comic book series thinking to myself when is rick grimes gonna lose his hand and they never pulled the trigger on that that. Um, but they did and within the first few minutes of this episode they definitely were not playing around uh, some great emotional moments uh, the pain and the suffering that he put himself through in an attempt to escape only not to escape um, but I really love just the passion uh, and I also love the way that they told this story sort of like through letters that um, Rick is writing to Michonne if he ever gets the opportunity to kind of see her ever again and so the idea of him sort of living this life always trying to figure out his next way of escape clearly he's tried to do this on several occasions i think this was like the fourth attempt that he tried to do but he's got somebody in his corner and a gentleman by the name of Okafor um, that is at least one of the leaders in this particular military and has, has their eyes set on Rick. He sees something in Rick. He wants him to join the military, go up the ranks sort of thing. But of course, Okafor certainly has his own personal agenda. And it was just really eye opening to kind of see 
again more secrets on top of secrets on top of secrets and learning just sort of like the dirty insides on how this city is sort of built right i think okafor mentions that there are people they refer to as a's and people that they refer to as b's a's certainly like the leader type sort of thing that will sacrifice and do anything to save people come to find out when they realize that you're an a they may bring you in but eventually take you out and then kill you because they want the b's they want the followers the people that are looking for refuge that are just going to be happy that they have some sort of safe safety and salvation, right? That they can kind of have as sort of like orderly um, citizens within their place, right? So they, upon seeing Rick, certainly think of him so, certainly as a bee, like some stragglers, some some random person out there looking for uh, a place to stay sort of thing. Come to find out Rick is very much an A and Okafor definitely uh, believes that and certainly wants to go ahead and keep him close despite the uh, fragility of Rick and his ability to want to escape all the time so it's very much an idea of maybe okafor thinking he can eventually talk rick grimes into falling in line um letting him in on the secrets eventually hoping that maybe as he moves up the ranks uh then rick grimes will do maybe even something bigger to kind of change the way that um this 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 city or this place maybe changes the way that it's doing things but rick on the other hand is very much me 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 right now like these are not my people my my people are still certainly out there he wants to find his wife he wants to go ahead and find his um his his kids and things like that and no matter of convincing is certainly going to change him and so to kind of see that internal struggle for rick was pretty impressive in here pretty amazing i thought the the acting was top notch the writing uh, truly blew me away some amazing sort of tense dramatic moments in here and i also love how they wind up going from sort of present day rick uh and then jumping into sort of like his dreams when he sleeps and he's constantly dreaming of uh, of michonne and to me it just continues to show not only how great of a love story this is but just how great of a chemistry that um deny and andrew just really have with each other because just the just the, the brief simple moments of them talking to each other on a park bench the little flirtatiousness the little looks at each other the smiles that they give sort of thing you can tell like we are so comfortable with each other. They've been doing this for such a long time that the love that they have for each other just beams on the screen, you know? And if anything, as a viewer, it makes me want Rick and Michonne to find each other as much as they possibly can. And so there is a level of sort of disappointment. I don't want to say disappointment, but you can clearly see Rick just getting exhausted, you know, doing so much to try and escape only to have that ripped away from him time after time after time uh and really find himself sort of stuck in a situation that he doesn't want to be in and it feels like it takes him at least a good year right because okafor asks him uh and i can't remember the other girls the other lady's name that's with him um to create sort of a new uh, addition like a new uh, base of operations and they spend literally a whole entire year developing it training people sort of thing and he kind of comes to the to the to the point of i've tried to look for you i've tried everything i possibly could to get away from here and i just can't and i don't want you to ever think that i did not try right like is is all the good that i'm doing here uh it's all in the process of trying to find you and i just cannot sort of get away uh, and so the idea that he even tosses away his letters and the 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 drawings that he has of uh, Michonne along with his daughter very much just kind of giving it up and putting his head down and sort of accepting the idea that this is his home now um, this is sort of his people uh, and I thought the the ending of this was pretty bananas the idea of seeing Rick finally embrace the situation that he's in and then his world just goes to shit once again with literally Okafor exploding uh, inside of the helicopter was just such a incredibly gnarly and violent scene something I would think I'd see like out of the boys on Amazon or something like that I mean homeboy's torso just exploded uh, 
uh, and just an incredible performance by Andrew, just showcasing the fear and the horror of him about to crash in this helicopter and trying to survive sort of thing, uh, only to come face to face with the people that took him down and come to find out that it is in fact Michonne and just bumping into each other in just the most craziest circumstances in a good year after he's sort of like just kind of given up um but you clearly see that despite him giving up he still dreams about her uh maybe his dreams are now sort of turning into nightmares um but he comes face to face with michonne who looks like some sort of samurai at this point like this makeshift samurai still using her sword to cut down these um cut down these uh, soldiers and so you know i i do have questions clearly uh it ended rather abruptly but i thought for an hour episode man they got a lot of content in they got a lot of great in-depth character work for for rick um the connection with michonne even though michonne wasn't in this episode very much um but just through sort of his dreams about her uh you get to remember and rekindle sort of that love that these two had and really what um their life could have been um before all of this sort of chaos and the walkers uh kind of kind of came you know what i mean so i thought it was just really enlightening uh, to see what rick dreams of with uh with michonne uh, and what he wishes that his life certainly could have been so you know I, I would like to know how michonne took them down the helicopter why is she killing these soldiers if you're aware of sort of the civic um um republic military um does she know about some of the other places you know it, again there are some questions that i have um you know okafor um I did believe on Twitter when Okafor mentions that he helped take down Los Angeles, he helped take down Atlanta, and I think he was getting, he took down Philadelphia, I think, and killed like 4,000 people, including his wife, in order to make sort of like the sacrifice that needed to be made. I saw on Twitter that the Fear of the Walking Dead showcase the bombing of los angeles and that's the connection that okafor has at least to another series so they've been doing some great work i guess in regards to just a bigger overall walking dead universe and very much marvel cinematic sort of it's all connected making those connective tissues and those pieces so um i thought that was pretty eye-opening um to, for me to learn uh, another new piece of the puzzle for how okafor certainly fits into all of that but you know when when the episode starts for the one who lives the ones who live they talk about a breach i think at an in omaha um and so it, to me the impression that i get is that it's not walkers that wind up breaking down the barrier that maybe it was some sort of self-sabotage or maybe somebody from the outside trying to get in uh and cause um ca ca you know whether it free people kill people i have no idea but it feels very much like a saboteur sort of thing so there's a part of me that wonders like did michonne and the people that she know have anything to do with it um does she know of the bigger plan that's happening between these two two cities and the secret city sort of thing so i'm sure we'll probably get more pieces certainly to the puzzle but crazy way i was just thinking to myself while watching the episode like are they ever gonna connect with each other in this episode at all or is this gonna happen like episode two or three uh, and they very much sort of give it to us at the end but i tell you man andrew garfield one hell of an actor truly carried this episode with just his emotions and his performance and his acting i mean it blew me away um so hell of an episode i'm definitely going to be coming back for episode number two uh and uh definitely giving you guys a review for episode two as well i believe it drops every weekend every sunday perhaps so certainly expect these reviews if not on monday then definitely on tuesday for you guys and look if you want me to talk more walking dead certainly let me know i got i'm not gonna lie this sort of really got me excited to dive back into this world again i mean i know they have so many other spin-off series like dead city and the daryl dixon stuff i believe carol might even be coming back for the daryl dixon season two if not if i'm not mistaken but there's a lot out there for me to catch up on i may just stick with this and see where rick and michonne's story goes and continue to follow them but um we'll see how it goes man but look these are just my a plus opinions i want to know yours i absolutely love the first episode i definitely want to know your guys's thoughts on the first episode of the ones who live so let your thoughts be known in the comment section box below guys but other than that do me a big favor as always take care of yourselves take care of each other and keep it a plus we'll talk to you guys later bye